Hi guys and welcome back. So far we've looked at the Takamura vs Hawk fight where we see Takamura's extreme weight cutting. In my last video we looked at Nekoto vs Anderson where we see the dangers of fighting punch drunk. And today we're going to be continuing with the Kamigawa history arc where we'll be breaking down the fight injuries between Kamigawa and Anderson. So for those who don't know me already, my name's Dr. Maddie. Welcome to Doc Off Call. Comment down below what anime scenes you'd like me to break down next. But if you're otherwise ready, let's begin. <laughs> and of course Kamigawa can outrun a train. But cardio is so important in boxing. The more you do, the fitter you become. And the fitter you are, the longer you can last in a fight without needing to worry about conserving your energy. Studies have shown that performing cardiovascular exercise five times a week for four weeks can increase your cardiorespiratory output by up to 25%. So really, cardio is king. <laughs> <laughs> and that is definitely the most inspirational quote of this video. If my fists break, it means they weren't up to the task to begin with. I mean, what a mentality. You'd really need to be careful fighting anyone with that level of resolve. <laughs> Okay, so Kamigawa here is trying to develop lethal weapons in the form of his fists, and he's doing this by smashing them up against this tree. Now, I think I've seen something similar in Thai boxing where fighters kick wooden beams to try and strengthen their shins. Now, my understanding of this type of training is that it causes microfractures within the bones of the shin, and what this does is that it causes the bones to remodel and heal harder than the bone that had been there originally. But also, repeated trauma to this area can cause damage to the sensory nerve supply, which means that when they throw a kick, they feel less pain. I mean, I wouldn't personally advise it, but then again, I'm not a boxer. <laughs> and it seems to have worked out for Kamagawa, and what an awesome name for a move, the Iron Fist. But clearly, with all this blood we can see, you'd be worried about whether he's done more damage than good. In fact, on the topic of injuries, fractures in boxers are very common. There is a fracture that is so common in boxers that it's actually known as a boxer's fracture. Now, the fracture normally affects the fifth metacarpal bone, as seen in this x-ray, and it normally heals really well without needing surgery. And here we go. Kamagawa has come a long way from the beginning of this series where he was getting his ass kicked by Anderson. It's funny how a little perspective can change one's focus and outlook on a fight. So much so that Kamigawa's mental state is key for him to have any chance against defeating Anderson. As they say, believing that you can defeat your opponent is half the fight. <laughs> Gosh, and what power he's developed in those fists, with Anderson claiming that he can feel the pain in the marrow of his bone. And it's interesting that he says this because bone marrow actually has a large amount of sensory nerve fibres. In fact, studies have shown that bone marrow has the second highest density of sensory fibres after the outermost part of the bone. Also, the music used in this scene sounds very familiar. In fact, it's reminiscent of the anime Hunter x Hunter. Is there any overlap between these two anime? Yeah. 
Okay, and it looks like Anderson seems to have the upper hand in this fight with sidestepping Kamagawa and delivering swift jabs. And although Kamagawa has ridiculous strength and resolve, he doesn't seem to have the same nimble nature that we saw with Nekoto in our previous video. And I guess what this shows is strength isn't everything. You need to be a well-balanced fighter to be able to defeat any opponent. <laughs> <laughs> and just when you thought Kamagawa was losing hope, Nekoto comes out of coma, struggles through brain damage, just to remind him what he's fighting for. Fortunately, this seems to be enough to re-energize and refocus Kamagawa on defeating Anderson. And you know, mental resolve is just so important. In fact, it's a very common theme throughout this anime series. It reminds me of an interview with Mo Farah, one of the long-distance Olympic athletes. I remember him explaining that the reason he was able to win in many of his races was just down to his mental resolve. He was able to stick it out with the pain for longer than his opponents, which ultimately led to him becoming an Olympic champion. I mean, wow, what depth of character these four anime episodes were able to achieve. It's pretty amazing how this arc was created with just four 20 minute episodes. I mean, I feel so connected to the characters. It's really a masterpiece. If this arc doesn't inspire you to go away and start watching this anime, I don't really know what will. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go, Nekoto passing on what he's learned from fighting Anderson. And the same thing is done in modern boxing. Boxers often watch their opponents' fights looking for flaws or patterns of behaviour that they're able to exploit or make them vulnerable. And seemingly when Anderson throws a right, he leaves his flank open and exposed, vulnerable for an attack. And I love this green eye thing that this anime does, and there's really great sound design around this scene. Is this something that's just unique to Hajime no Ippo? And I guess what they're trying to depict here is your fighting spirit as a boxer. And I think doing it this way captures it quite well. But something that may have allowed Kamagawa to take the sting out of Anderson's punch is that he was so close to him. Getting really close to your opponent like this prevents them from getting their full weight behind the punch by taking out the velocity and the torque they're able to generate with the pullback and full extension. <laughs> God, and again, what a great sound design for this scene. But as we spoke about earlier, Kamagawa has gone straight for one of Anderson's vital spots, his floating ribs and his liver. Remember, we spoke about the dangers of a liver punch in my last video, remembering that when you punch the liver, it activates the parasympathetic nervous system, which can shock and overwhelm your body by causing a drop in both your blood pressure and heart rate and lead you to collapse. God, and another punch to the opposite side, hitting yet another vital point. And in this case, I assume that's one of his lower ribs. And a punch of this strength is definitely going to cause some rib fractures. Now the danger of this is that the fractured segments can bend inwards, penetrating through into the vital organs, leading to internal bleeding, which can ultimately be fatal and lead to death. <laughs> しかし
試合前から拳に大怪我を抱えていたようだな。Gosh, okay, so Kamagawa had actually entered the fight with two broken hands. I mean, what a lunatic. And the danger of coming into a fight like this is that you can add injury to injury, which means the likelihood of things healing well is far less likely. Remember, earlier we said that the most common fracture that affects boxers is something called a boxer's fracture. And I've said that these normally heal well, but if you've got fracture on top of fracture and the bones are coming out of the skin, you may well need surgery to really correct this, which might unfortunately end your boxing career. The only real way of knowing the extent of the injuries is by getting those gloves off. <laughs> So, in the end, Kamagawa defeated Anderson, maintaining the Japanese pride and completing the Kamagawa history arc. Now, if you want to watch some more anime fight breakdowns, this video might be for you. And if you'd like something a little different, then maybe this. Otherwise, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.